We often get swept up in the emotions of wrestling. Matches are one thing, but when you can truly feel and resonate with the words from a promo, that's when the sport becomes real and truly grips us. Today, we're going to focus on those segments that really hit close to home and pulled on our heartstrings as we list the top 10 most emotional promos in wrestling. First, we have two honorable mentions. Retiring from the ring is never easy, but it's one thing to end a career on your own terms. Being forced to retire due to injury is a sad way to go out, an unfortunate reality for numerous wrestlers, including Edge, who said, goodbye to the squared circle in 2011 after a history of neck problems as the MRI showed that uh, that I have to retire this is a little bit tougher than I thought it was going to be. It was a teary affair for the rated R superstar, who took the solace in the fact that he was able to go out on top as the world heavyweight champion. However, after eight years away, Edge made a triumphant return at the 2020 Royal Rumble. You think you know me? No, no way. But I hope that all of you join me on this ride. A rest of retiring is sad because it's so real. So imagine using something that's inherently emotional in a storyline, paired with an Oscar-worthy performance that fooled everyone. As Mark Henry was to retire from wrestling on the June 17, 2013 edition of Raw, Mark had interrupted a promo from WWE champion at the time, John Cena. Mark spoke directly from the heart, with tears in his eyes. His final moments as a member of the active roster were to be perhaps some of his greatest, as he gave such an impassioned speech that had everyone in the arena thanking him for his career. To my little girl, Jill. Joanna, baby, I'm coming home. Cena allowed Henry to hold up the WWE Championship, a title the world's strongest man had never won. And then, just like that, Mark did what was seemingly unthinkable given the circumstances. This type of storyline hadn't been done too often in wrestling, but even at that, few angles in history fooled fans like Mark Henry's fake retirement. I'm coming home. WWE Champion. It was everything we love about wrestling. It hit on something real that drew us in emotionally, only to swerve us at the last minute with an act which we didn't see coming, but made sense in the context of the story. Number 10, HPK loses his smile. Shawn Michaels is no stranger to being involved in emotional moments in wrestling. Such as when he called it a career the night after losing to The Undertaker at WrestleMania 26. The heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels has left the building. One of the most emotional segments involving Sean happened in February 1997, when Michaels had to forfeit the WWF title due to injury. It's remembered as the promo where Sean lost his smile. I've lost a lot of things and one of them has been my smile. It was a single most greatest year of my life. Despite the sobbing, some people doubted the severity of Michael's injury, including Bret the Hitman Hart, who Sean was penciled in to wrestle at the upcoming WrestleMania. You phony little faker, why don't you right, take right, your little pussyfoot injury? No. no. Go back and find your smile. Where Brett was expected to get his win back after losing to HBK at the previous year's Mania. I remember I didn't buy any of it. I thought this is the biggest bunch of bullshit ever. It's just his way of not dropping the belt to me, which just to be reeked of unprofessionalism. Number nine, Daniel Bryan retirement speech. Daniel Bryan's retirement was also a case of recurring injury forcing him to step away. In Bryan's case, it was due to concussions. His emotional farewell saddened fans, but they and the other talent were able to give Daniel's career a great send off. In his hometown of Seattle, Brian reflected on his love for wrestling and thanked the fans for their unwavering support that helped make him a star. I have loved this in a way that I have never loved anything else. Daniel gave a special mention to the night which also took place in Seattle, where fans hijacked the WWE World Title Unification Ceremony, since it was the last time Brian's father was able to watch his son perform live before he passed. This is maniacal! <laughs> the WWE Universe is going wild! And that was the last time my dad ever got to see me wrestle. And you guys made it special. The crowd and the entire WWE roster yesed and applauded Brian to cap off a sad but wholesome segment. It was just over two years later that Brian was medically cleared to return to the ring. Daniel once again emotionally addressed the audience to announce his comeback. And if you fight for your dreams, your dreams will fight for you! Brian returned to action at WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans. Resting in the same building, he achieved his greatest feat four years prior. There's the name! Sammy Zane Tex! 
Number 8. Roman Reigns goes through leukemia. Amidst a run as Universal Champion in 2018, Roman Reigns was forced to relinquish his title in the cruelest of ways. Reigns spoke out of character, telling the world he'd previously been diagnosed with leukemia and that it had sadly now returned. The crowd was stunned into silence. My real name is Joe and I've been living with leukemia for 11 years and unfortunately it's back. And I'm not gonna lie, I'll take every prayer you can send my way but I'm not looking for sympathy. Fans were in shock at the announcement with some being driven to tears. However, Roman assured us it wasn't a goodbye. This was just a see you later. True to his word, Roman would return four months later to much fanfare, thanking the fans and announcing he was in remission. I'm in remission, y'all. Before sharing a moment with his mother and S.H.I.E.L.D. partner Seth Rollins. Welcome back! Number 7, Ric Flair. Even though the retired wrestlers we've looked at so far ended up returning to the ring, we still can't deny the sheer emotion and sadness felt when they first had to step away. The same goes for the nature boy Ric Flair. Nate said goodbye to his illustrious wrestling career in 2008. Flair's career ended in style with a tearful address that was followed by a who's who of his friends, family and former rivals that came down to celebrate Ric's career. I have had the greatest wrestling career in the history of pro wrestling. I have wrestled in front of more fans, raised more hell, had more fun, and loved all of you every day of my life. Thank you, Thank you, Let me say to you, from the bottom of my heart, I love you, man. Flair's time in wrestling is remembered for his legendary promos, which were filled with passion and emotion. With a tear in my eye, this is the greatest moment in my life. Art Anderson passed the torch. It was real, damn it. I have to wake up every day and look at this. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah, this is you. This is what you did. Yeah, it hurt. It still hurts. Number six, John Cena never gives up. A promo that epitomizes John Cena's career. As Cena addressed his WWE Championship loss to Sheamus at the previous night's TLC pay-per-view, John cut a fiery promo, upholding his mantra of never give up. Cena spoke about his passion for the WWE. He was like a man possessed, determined to regain his title. I needed to take a second, and I wanted to apologize to anybody that I might have let down last night. This is kind of hard to understand, but Sometimes you can try so hard at something. Sometimes you can be so, so prepared and still fail. And with every time you fail, it's painful. It causes sadness. And especially as I saw last night, it causes disappointment. I've often said a man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory, by, but, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. So no matter how great the setback, how severe the failure. You never give up. You never give up. You pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, you push forward, you move on, you adapt, you overcome. That is what I believe. The WWE Universe is all I got. This is my everything. So I'm not gonna say tonight that I'm gonna, I'm gonna work harder, that I'm gonna be more dedicated. I'm gonna put more time in the gym, that's impossible. What I'm gonna say to all of you tonight that are gonna listen, is what happened to TLC will never happen again. Everybody here, everybody watching, I won't be stopped. I can't be stopped. Cena is sometimes accused of underselling losses or brushing things off with jokes, but neither was the case in this instance. Cena put over the gravity of his loss by projecting how it made him feel and what he would do to respond, all while having the crowd in the palm of his hand. This was Cena at his best. Number 5, The Miz. Next we have an example where Cena, not taking a wrestler seriously enough, played into the story. It happened on an episode of Raw from August of 2017, when after two initial jokes from Cena, So this is what a sold out bar's case looks like. It's, it's Barclays, Barclays. Real good, always making a joke out of everything. The Miz fired back to cut one of the best promos of his career. Did I interrupt a moment? How many moments do you two get? Because you know, in life, you're always told that if you work hard, if you chip away, if you plug away, if you do your job, then your moment will come and I am sick of waiting for my moment while two undeserving people like you two in moments week after week after week. This is my show, week in and week out. I'm the one working here. Now you and not you. I am sick 
I'm not getting the respect I deserve. Your shirt says, respect, earn it. I've earned it for 12 damn years. Where is my moment? The frustration felt by Miz here had previously been seen at different points in his career, especially during his famous Talking Smack promo in 2016, where he clapped back after criticism from Daniel Bryan. And I'm sick of all of you, my GM, sitting there criticizing me, calling me the coward. I'm the one here, day in and day out, in that wrestling ring, beating people up. Number 4. Dolph Ziggler reflects on his career Ziggler was one of the standout performers in the WWE during much of the PG era. However, he never reached the main event level which led to frustration. This frustration was seen during some of Dolph's promos. I tell everyone, I'm great, I'm awesome, I'm the best, you can't follow me, and yet I still... I don't come out on top. Every night I deliver! And if everyone is in my head telling me what's wrong, I know that I am right. For 11 years, I've never heard that wasn't good enough. I told sometimes I've been told that was too good. This continued to the point where Ziggler, being seemingly destined to be a career mid-carder, began to be used in storyline. It's you who wins the WWE Championship and it should have been me. You all respect him and you all admire him and it should be me. It should have been me. It should have been me. Perhaps the most famous was Ziggler's passionate speech to his hometown of Cleveland during a feud with The Miz in 2016. Dolph looked close to tears while pondering how his career had not gone the way he'd hoped. This, this is all I have. This couple minutes a night, 300 nights a year, this is my everything. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone when they know that I live for this. This, this is what I love. But you know what? Sometimes things you love don't always love you back. And you can give, 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 and sometimes you get nothing in return. You get nothing. And you have friends and family and fans coming up to you telling you, why do you still do it? Why are you still here? Why do you subject yourself to this every night? And maybe my career didn't always turn out the way I thought it would, you know? I thought it would have been better. I thought I, I thought I earned something. I thought I would be a bigger star, but you know what? I just can't stop myself. No matter how many matches he'd lost or how the office viewed him, Ziggler was still able to make fans believe in him again thanks to this outstanding promo. It set up a match where Dolph put his job on the line versus the Intercontinental Champion The Miz in a career versus title match, which Ziggler ultimately won. Number 3. Cody Rhodes battles through family and pain. The American Nightmare has cut his fair share of emotional promos. It took me to go from undesirable to un goddamn deniable. The undisputed WWE Universal Champion. I have to finish the story. A skill no doubt passed down to him by his father, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. I have wined and dined with kings and queens, and I've slept in alleys and dined on pork and beans. Get a dream, hold on to it, and shoot for the sky. My times are when the textile workers around this country are out of work. They got four or five kids and can't pay their wages. They each showcase their ability to blend their real life into the world of pro wrestling. Because of this, fans don't just buy into what they were saying, they felt it, since wrestling is often at its best when it can mirror the human experience. It was only fitting that Cody battled his brother Dustin in an incredible match, which was followed by a very personal moment between the two siblings. I need my older brother. Cody's first promo back after returning to WWE was significant. As much as it was tearful, it laid out his plan to not just follow in his father's footsteps, but achieve something the dream never could. The American dream, Dusty Rhodes. He was my hero. At eight years old, I knew not what I wanted to do, what I needed to do. I was going to win this championship belt right here. I was going to bestow it into the hands of the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and I would tell him, nobody can take it away from you now. Unfortunately, that dream died. It died right in front of me. Yes, I cannot physically put that title belt into my father's hands. I cannot bestow it upon the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, but I certainly can put it around the waist of the American Nightmare. And I am going to do it for the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. 
but Cody's path to the WWE title was going to be far from straightforward. An injury setback led to an impassioned speech after Rose wrestled inside Hell in a Cell with a torn pec. In what could have been the lowest point in my career, in what could have been the absolute worst night, in what was literal hell, I was not cynical, I was not jaded, I stood, I fought. A run-in with Paul Heyman in the lead-up to WrestleMania 39 saw Cody put his feud with Roman Reigns briefly on hold in order to thank Paul for looking after the Rose family by giving Dusty work in ECW during a period where the family's money had run out. ECW gave my father his confidence back and I can never ever repay you for that. Number 2 Bray Wyatt returns. Fans welcomed Bray Wyatt back to the WWE with open arms. Bray endured a rough year personally, having lost two people close to him on top of getting fired. We were ready to see a different side to Wyatt this time around. His return promo was incredibly heartfelt. We could really feel every word Bray said. I'm incredibly grateful and I'm really, really nervous to be here, but I never thought of this would happen. This past year in my life, I've, I, I lost a lot of things. I lost my career. I lost my self-confidence. I lost two people who were very, very close to me. I lost my way. I thought that everything that I'd ever done here or otherwise, I thought it was all meaningless. Nothing I ever did has mattered to anyone. I was wrong. I can sit here right now today and I can look all of you in the eyes and I can say that you were there when I was weak, when I was vulnerable, when I was down. So I just wanted to say thank you. You all saved my life. We were never able to truly see what this version of Wyatt was capable of due to his tragic passing in 2023. All of you can feel the spirit of Bray Wyatt in this building. This made his return promo even more poignant. We can take comfort in how this promo allowed Bray to see what he meant to the fans, while also telling them what they meant to him. Number 1. Eddie Guerrero's New Addiction As we've seen from each entry on our list, the best promos are often rooted in reality, with real life feelings and emotions being expressed, that in turn are tied into the storyline context of wrestling. Eddie Guerrero's story arc was one of the most captivating, because of how it incorporated his real life struggles with addiction. This coupled with how much harder he had to work due to being undersized as well as the story that was told, helped make Eddie's eventual crowning moment so much more special. But right before this could happen, Guerrero delivered a career-defining promo on the go-home show before his big match. Eddie's upcoming opponent, Brock Lesnar, had previously brought up Guerrero's past substance abuse issues, allowing Latino Heat to fire back and speak about his struggles with real-life emotions as a way to build for the match. I am an addict. About three years ago, Holmes, they carried me straight into rehab. Through all that time, bro, through all those three years, not only did I wind up losing my job, I lost my wife, I lost my kids, and I lost myself. I disgraced my race, I disgraced my family, and I disgraced myself. Day by day, I have earned my life back. See, when I step into this ring, yeah, bro, I am addicted. I'm addicted to the high that I get from them. I'm addicted to the high that I get when I go home and I tell my family, hey, I'm doing it. I'm addicted to the satisfaction that I get to tell everybody like you that didn't believe in me, you can stick it up your ass. Winning the WWE title would be Eddie's final step to redemption. Eddie cheated! Oh, yeah! Eddie Guerrero did it! And that's Eddie's mom right there! It's a different kind of high tonight! Now if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video on 10 moments that completely stunned the fans. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.